Good morning. Good morning. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Rhonda Rager Johnson, and it is truly a privilege to be your MC this morning. Please rise for the entrance of the official party. Congresswoman Sochi Small Torres, Major General Jerry Grizzle, Board of Regents, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to present the faculty of the New Mexico Military Institute and the high school graduating class of 2019, Brigadier General Douglas Murray, the Dean of Academics, and Colonel George Britt, the Vice Dean of Academics and High School Principal, Please lead in the processional. Captain Bertha Gomez, Senior Academic Counselor, please lead in our class of graduates.
Ladies and gentlemen, please, please render courtesy for our national anthem. Please be seated. On behalf of the Corps of Cadets of the New Mexico Military Institute, the faculty and staff, and the thousands of alumni present today and around the world, welcome to our 2019 commencement ceremony. It is my privilege to introduce the 19th president and superintendent of the New Mexico Military Institute, Major General Jerry Grizzle, United States Army, retired. Welcome to the 2019 Spring Commencement at New Mexico Military Institute. My wife, Sean, and I are delighted to be with you for the most important occasion for two reasons. First, we're glad to have the opportunity to meet and greet you, family and friends of our newest graduates. Members of our faculty, our staff, and especially you, our graduates. Second, the opportunity for us to celebrate our 10th graduation ceremony, our 20th if you count our midterm graduation in December. Sean and I have friends that ask us if we get tired of the routine of being the president and the first lady at NMMI. Our answer is emphatically no. The events may be the same from year to year, but the faces change. Just as we look forward in August to the arrival of over 500 new rats, we look forward to December and May when we say farewell to over 200 of our successful cadets moving on to the next phase of their life. From those faces of wonder and amazement in August to those faces of pride and self-confidence in May, we have enjoyed our 10 years at NMMI, and we look forward to each new year in the future. Joining us today are our guest speaker, Congresswoman Tora Small, members of the NMMI Board of Regents, our president, Colonel Timothy Paul, on stage with us, Colonel Barbara Trent, vice president of the board, Brad Christmas, our secretary treasurer, Dr. Cedric Page, and Mr. John Garcia. Thank you for being here to honor these incredible young men and women as our graduates. Thank you for making my 10th year more memorable than the others and every bit as enjoyable as the first. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Major General Grizzle. NMMI is about culture and tradition. Our culture is that of a military school and one of cherished military traditions is recognition of outstanding performance that is in keeping with our motto, duty, honor, achievement. Recognizing the salutatorian and valedictorian of the respective classes fits that tradition. Ladies and gentlemen, the salutatorian of the third class, Cadet Aaron Alisa Wolf, 
Albuquerque, New Mexico. Good morning, ladies, gentlemen, faculty, staff, friends, and family. We're here today to celebrate the graduation of the class of 2019, and it is my honor to be this year's salutatorian. I would like to begin by honoring those in the audience. Without you, most of us would not be standing here today. I like to consider us, class, the best leaders NIMI has known. Some of you may be the first in your family to be graduating from high school. Some of you may be the first to be graduating from a military school, or the first to be going into the armed forces. No matter the case, I'd like to congratulate you, class, because as we leave here today, not only are you paving the road towards your dreams, but building the path for others, for those whom you've impacted as leaders, mentors, or friends. Whatever category you fall into, our accomplishments here are astounding. But before I speak of the future, I would like to reminisce in the past once more. Many of us began our journeys at different times, but we all began wearing the same red hat and the knowingly tall socks. Those objects, although many of us have thrown them away, or burn them, represent the beginning of a familial bond between rat buddies, many of whom will be our lifelong friends or have created the most character-shaping memories with. It is easy to forget how you feel in any specific moment and fall into complacency. But as we have learned here as both cadets and students, in order to achieve success, we must constantly strive to move forward. Even if that means leaving your rat buddies behind to transfer troops or leave your alma mater to reach a higher education. There may be times in which we do not succeed, at least not immediately, but do not count this as failure class. It is a learning experience. It is only a failure if you allow it to defeat you. One of the largest lessons we learned here, being at NMMI, is not to slip into complacency, because many of us will get stuck and begin to lose motivation. But nonetheless, these habits we have learned and formed here will become our weapons against failure and assist us in conquering the challenges we face in the years to come. Class, we have the strongest willpower and the biggest hearts I've ever come across. We have spent time here battling hardships against all odds, overcoming challenges, marching a full parade at zero dark 30 in the morning, and standing at parade rest in the blazing sun waiting to be inspected. Your personal stories and our shared obstacles have led me to believe that every single one of us is capable of greatness, despite the cards we may have been dealt which is why I am certain our future is bright and bountiful. We will all leave here today with different aspirations and goals in life, but we will all carry the same flame within us. This flame was lighted when we arrived here as rats and were stripped of our character and built anew. Disciplined, knowledgeable, loyal, and eventually became trusted and dependable leaders. I'd like to remind you that life is short and there are many uncertainties in it, so follow your heart and let your flame light the way. What we now have within us is meant to be shared with the world sprinkled within our communities and encouraged within our successors. Our achievements will inspire, our advancements will change lives, and our souls will spark the flames in others. So I encourage you, class, to use this flame within you and ignite humanity. Touch their hearts. Become the person not that they remember by rank or title, but by your actions, your leadership, and your strength. Grab the next generation by the hand and show them the way. Ignite their flame. Open their eyes to their potential as we once were. We matter to the world around us, and they will be thankful for our contributions. But do not remem remember, but do remember <laughs> that as we reach our goals, do not step on others to achieve them. Rather, assist them, and they will then assist you and lend you the helping hand you may need. Do not tread through life with the goal of planting your flag on top of the hill, but for the lives you will impact through the journey and the fires you will ignite. Thank you. Thank you, Cadet Wolf. How a high school confers the title of valedictorian is based typically upon the highest grade point average. At NMMI, the highest academically ranked graduate in the class, determined by the academic criteria, is recognized as class valedictorian. I would like to introduce tr a truly exceptional cadet, Gavin Wayne Yates, Weatherford, Texas. The valedictorian. <laughs> Of the class of 2019. Major General Grizzle, Congressman Torres Small, Colonel Paul, other esteemed members of the Board of Regents, General Murray, Colonel Brick, 
Lieutenant Colonel Graff, head local. I had to, I'm sorry. You know, when I sat down to write this speech, it was interesting to look back on the past. I remember when my oldest sister graduated in 2010 and I was listening to the valedictorian speech, only 10 years old. I don't remember the specifics of the speech. All I remember is that it became my biggest goal to stand up here and be your valedictorian. Fast forward nine years and wow, we, what a roller coaster of four years we have finally completed. When we first arrived, about give or take 25 of us were 14 years old and most, like me, had yet to even hit our growth spurts. We arrived afraid, small, and curious. We did not know yet, we did not understand that what we were about to embark on would change us for the rest of our lives. In a true test of perseverance, we all grew mentally and physically as we faced challenges that most high schoolers can't even imagine. Not every freshman in high school wakes up prior to 6 a.m. every morning for an entire year. Not every freshman has to run everywhere and square their corners, especially for a reason as cheesy as teaching cadets not to cut corners in life. I almost did not make it. I remember sitting down with my mother, <laughs> begging her to let me come back to Brock High School after freshman year, struggling through tears because I missed my family and normal life. She responded with a simple, we will talk about it later. <laughs> we never talked about it again. <laughs> Thank God we never had to talk about it again. After a solid rat year, we returned from summer incredibly different all in our own way. I, for one, had grown about three inches. At this point, another rat class came and went, and only a handful of them still remain in this graduating class. Sophomore year, we faced other challenges, such as taking on extended leadership positions to which only someone who had been to NIMI understands. We had to face the scrutiny and gaze of TLAs who seemed like they had it out for us. Junior year, we were almost adults. Most of us came back with the newfound overrated ability to grow facial hair. <laughs> Unless you're Zach Weshley, since he's had that ability since he was 11 or something. <laughs> I don't know the specifics. We also had more expected of us, and some of us were so lucky to have the opportunity to bomb physics a year other than most. <clears throat> Thank you, Colonel Surgit. <laughs> Finally, this year, rolled around and we had all been waiting on this year. We knew that only one extremely long essay stood in the way of our diploma. The consecutive nights of staying up until 3 a.m. to write lit reviews or annotated bibliographies finally paid off when we were each handed back our capstone with a grade that meant more than any amount of money in the world. It signaled the beginning of the end. This has been a long and tiresome journey filled with anger, stupidity, tears, sweat, tiresome nights, coffee, ramen noodles, and of course, broken hearts. However, through all the strife, there's been a lot of good times. When I was a rat, I decided to go out for my birthday and get coffee at Starbucks and study for some tests I had that week. After being at Starbucks for about 10 minutes, my coffee hadn't even cooled down yet, I got a phone call from my roommate who told me that somebody had come into my room and stolen some stuff. So I slammed the rest of my coffee. Mind you, it was one of them venti ones from Starbucks. Enormous. It, it took kind of skill. <clears throat> I'm not wasting a $5 coffee. <laughs> and hauled back to my room, only to bust into my friends holding an ice cream cake and singing me happy birthday. I promptly left. I left them. <laughs> and I came back five minutes later when I was no longer, lo longer angry. It was the people who made the Institute all worth it. They always talk about how at NIMI you make lifelong friends. Out of all the weird things said about NIMI, this is the one I can promise is true. I cannot imagine the last four years without my close friendships that have developed through all the supposed strife and hardness. And these friendships will continue to grow through the years. The older the violin, the sweeter the music. It was only through the strength of camaraderie that only somebody who attended military school would understand that we were able to persevere through four extremely long, brutal years. That is what we need to take away from this experience. It doesn't matter if someone knows how to stand at attention or march in a platoon. What matters is that we have single-handedly proved the strength of the mind and our willpower can overcome any obstacle that stands in our paths. 
An old friend of mine once said, the only healthy way to live life is to learn to like the little everyday things. And I promise we've done that. Whether it be getting one extra hour of sleep once a month, is how they were kind of handed out, not like candy or anything. <laughs> so go take on ROTC, the Marine Corps, or regular college. Do not be afraid of the unknown. You never know what golden opportunities lie ahead. Don't expect perfection. Even, though, even through complete failure, one grows and learns. However, you can do it. Do it knowing that whatever you do from henceforth is guaranteed solely by your effort and perseverance that we have gained from being cadets at New Mexico Military Institute. Before I conclude, I of course have to thank a couple of people who have had a massive impact on my time or my life. Firstly, I have to thank my parents, Terry Calhoun and Eddie Yates, for always supporting me in everything I do. I know I speak for all the graduates here when I say that the appreciation and admiration of our parents is what drives us. To my step-parents, Leslie and Jimbo, thank you for supporting my parents and helping them through the last four years. And thank you for helping me. It takes a special person to be great parents, and it, even it takes an even more special person to be great step-parents. To my friend Daniel Dottie, thank you for being my first friend at NIMI. We've had some good times since we were both rats in hotel troop, and that one time you chased me down stoop in your robe because I cussed at you. <laughs> he remembers. I don't know where he is, but he remembers. Thank you to Lieutenant Colonel Romero for always being like a pseudo dad to me these last four years. I still remember that one time you came and yelled at me to get in your office. I was so scared, and you just asked if there was anything I'd like to tell my mom back when we couldn't have phones. The good old days, mind you. Also, I will never forget the look on your face when you did sharp training freshman year, and it turned out barking was a form of sexual harassment. I can't believe I wrote that down. I'd like to thank the staff in the alumni office, uh, Chris Ward, Lieutenant Colonel Danny Armijo, Ms. Yerby, and Ms. Witzel, for always being there for me when I needed you. I'd like to thank Tony Spears, Without him, I wouldn't be standing here. Uh, thank you to, this is a big one, Miss Brown, or Mama Brown, if you're lucky, for everything you do for us and definitely for our parents. You do not get the appreciation you deserve. Thank you. Finally, a huge thank you to the class of 2019 and congratulations. It does not matter if we've been here for four years or one. We finally did it. Thank you. Thank you, Cadet Yates. Absolutely impressive young cadet, as are all of our 2019 graduates. Actually, that much doesn't change from year to year. All cadets are impressive, confident, courteous, and highly intelligent young men and women. Colonel Timothy Paul will now introduce Congresswoman Torres Small. Thank you. I, uh... Always want to take the opportunity to highlight our salutatorium and valedictorian for their comments. It is important to look back on your, your time, as our salutatorian said, and, and remember these snippets of time. They'll serve you well, uh, the lessons you've learned here, but try to remember what they were. Mine were uh, a few years ago, and it's not as easy as you think. So do take the time to internalize that. And I'm sure you all will join me in a moment of sympathy for Cadet Yates' parents, who are now the proud owners of a Starbucks-chugging uh, valedictorian. That's <laughs> quite an accomplishment. Actually, it is a very good accomplishment. Well, well thought out comments there. Speaking of success, it's my honor to introduce to you Congresswoman Sochi Torres Small, who represents New Mexico's second congressional district, which is the largest not at large district in the country, larger than the entire state of Florida, 
if you can believe that. I think anybody from New Mexico realizes that. It stretches from the Gila Wilderness in the west to the Permian Basin in the east, where we are, and from the southern tip of Bernalillo County to our border with Mexico in the boot heel. She grew up in Las Cruces, the largest city uh, in her district, the daughter of a school teacher and a social worker who later became a bus driver. After going away uh, to Georgetown for college, where she graduated in three years, get that guys and gals, this is a hard charger. She returned home, committed to help, committed to help others and, the, and improving the community she loved. She began her career as a field representative for Senator Tom Udall, where she worked to ensure the needs of the local communities were heard in Washington and translated to resources for rural health care, broadband, education, and economic development. Her work on Senator Udall's office on water inspired her to go to law school, where she studied water and natural resources before working for U.S. District Court Judge Robert C. Brack. There she saw firsthand the challenges facing our immigration system and the need to address both border security and immigration in a comprehensive manner. Most recently, she was practicing law focusing on water and natural resources. Now in Congress, she is committed to tackling the unique issues facing rural communities like those in southern New Mexico. Health care, accessibility, infrastructure development, job growth are things important to her. But most important, she is committed to bringing the voices of New Mexico, of those who live in New Mexico, to Washington every day. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Congresswoman Torres Small. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Paul. Thank you, General Grizzle, General Murray, Colonel Brick, Lieutenant Colonel Graff. Regents, deans, esteemed faculty and staff, cadets, and loving and proud parents. And of course, congratulations to the New Mexico Military Institute graduating class of 2019. Well done. Go Colts. I am deeply grateful to all of you for inviting me to share in this special day with you. This will be my first time ever giving a commencement speech. So I'll start with a great little piece of advice I borrowed from Eleanor Roosevelt. She said, do something every day that scares you. So Eleanor, I'm doing that right now, getting it out of the way by 0840. It is truly an inspiration to be here on campus with you. As I stood in Bronco Plaza, I could feel the history and tradition in my bones. Your dedication to honor, valor, and excellence, and to your task of being a better person today than you were yesterday, and to push yourself beyond the estimates and expectations of others, family, friends, and even yourselves. Your motto, duty, honor, achievement, marks the path on your journey to being better every single day. Congratulations. Not everyone's path will be lit so brightly. Not everyone will have the confidence that your education and training instills to march on when that path is less clear cut and the light begins to fade. We're all going to need your leadership, integrity, and commitment to valor. No pressure, though. You will never know what the world will ask of you. A year and a half ago, I never imagined myself giving a commencement address. And by the way, for those of you thinking that a commencement is a celebration of your accomplishment for having made it through four grueling years of studying, marching, fitness training, Bates Hall chow, marching, rat week, and of course, marching, it's not. To commence is to begin. So as you leave here, diploma in hand, this morning, you'll begin the next phase of your life. You embark on an adventure with a special set of tools forged here, a deep abiding respect for tradition, history, and a nimble ability to do what it takes and even lead others into the future. 
And because of the discipline, dedication to teamwork, and esprit de corps learned here, you can lead in the best possible way. And our lasting achievement will be to have left the world just a little bit better than we found it. You may not fully understand, feel, or appreciate this fact, but I bet your parents do. And the fact is this, that none of us will live forever. But we are all part of something that dies. And it is the mission and privilege of our lives to not just make peace with that fact, but to embrace it, to love it. Because beyond our head, beyond our conscious world of existence, we are, as we live on this earth, each of us, a brief flickering pixel in a much more vast process of possibility. It is our very smallness in this great masterpiece that fuels our strength and power. Like a tiny atom, that is what a cadet is. One atom, that is what a citizen is. We're all individual threads, yet interlaced and woven together in the same magnificent tapestry. Every thread as important as the next. As Emily Dickinson said, try your best to dwell in possibility. There is no greater feeling in the world than the feeling that you are exactly, right now, where you are supposed to be. That every decision, every misstep, every wrong turn, and bold leap you've ever made helped you get to the moment you belong in, right now. But within this moment and propelling you into the next is your deep abiding desire to be better today than you were yesterday. This is the what if of possibility that has shaped the arc of human progress. Now, I know it sounds a bit lofty and grandiose, but sometimes we need all the support and inspiration we can get to fight off that little voice inside us that says, I'm not good enough, or someone else will do it. Here's my personal story about that. My nana and grandpa came to the United States to work in the fields of the Mesilla Valley. Then my grandpa became a police sergeant. My mom and dad met at NMSU. My mom became a special ed teacher, and my dad was a social worker until he got laid off and became a school bus driver. And growing up in a tight-knit town of Las Cruces, my, Las Cruces was my world, but I longed to venture beyond the horizon. It wasn't until I went away for school that I realized how much I love New Mexico. And after graduating, I wanted to come home to give back to the community that had given me and my family so much. I volunteered and became a field rep for Senator Udall, got my law degree, clerked for a federal district judge, and then two years ago, I began to look for a candidate to represent me and my home district. I wanted someone that shared my values and my feeling that we all could do better. Someone who had the courage to speak up for us in Washington, who could be bold and reasonable, who fundamentally loves the people of New Mexico, who knows that anger is not action and would work with everyone to get the job done, who knows that we don't need to see eye to eye to stand shoulder to shoulder and to do the difficult and necessary work of rebuilding the country. Well, 16 months ago, I thought, what if that's supposed to be me? And it's been the best decision I've ever made. Four and a half months ago, I raised my right hand as part of the most diverse Congress and pledged to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, which begins with the words, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union. If those words aren't a living testament to the human need and desire to be better, to do better, I don't know what is. The very promise of America for the eyes and ears of the world was to deliver a more perfect union. As Lincoln said, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Not freedom and equality tugging on opposite ends of the same rope, but pulling together to achieve this more perfect union. Today marks the 40th anniversary of NMMI's first graduating class of female cadets. And I think this is, you can go ahead and clap for that. That is pretty great. (laughs) 
and I think this is proof of, these incre of positive in these increasingly divided times that we can all honor tradition as we celebrate progress. Forty years ago, many, if not most, opposed the integ integration of this school. Change does not come easy. It never has. It began with 28 female cadets who enrolled here in the fall of 1977. They faced down taunts and challenges that they weren't strong or brave enough to be here, proving with their resolve that they were clearly both. Within two more years, the number of female cadets was 85, yet there were still many who thought NMMI was simply no place for a girl. Soon, a female cadet, Bobby Wentz, became valedictorian of her junior class, junior college class. The number of detractors had diminished greatly, but a stubborn few remained. Then in 1998, Heather Christensen of Roswell earned the right to be selected the Corps' first female regimental commander. And here we are, celebrating the 40th anniversary of the graduation of those first brave female cadets on a day when, as I speak, over a third of the New Mexico Corps are young women, and fully half of the entire core leadership is female. So as the first woman to ever represent New Mexico's second congressional district in the United States House of Representatives, I feel unbelievably proud right now. As a woman, as a New Mexican, and most importantly, as an American. Because today we are honoring tradition and celebrating progress. And I can confirm that there is no greater feeling than this one the feeling that you are exactly in this moment where you were meant to be. Every graduating cadet in this auditorium is here because you had the strength and discipline to push yourself beyond what you could have imagined possible. And because you have lived the New Mexico Military Institute model, you have done your duty. You have carried yourself with honor and you have achieved success and will continue to do so. Congratulations to you, your professors who have taught you so well, and your parents who have raised such bold leaders and inclusive, compassionate allies. Now, as you walk out in the world today as graduates and adults, I hope you meet the world with courage and kindness, that you seek goodness and beauty and truth with an open heart and an unjaundiced eye. For these things are the very foundation upon which societies are built. I know my time is about up, but before I leave you, I want to give you seven simple rules for adulthood. Open your eyes. Stiffen your spine. Soften your heart. Speak your mind. Lend your hand. Love your neighbor. And live your life, because no one else can do that for you. And remember, wherever you go after this, New Mexico will be right here. Don't forget us, because we won't forget you. Abrazos y gracias. Thank you. What probably the majority of the audience doesn't know is that the Congresswoman has already visited NMMI, spent the better part of the morning with us at her request, and her questions were very uh, appropriate. She wanted to know what we were doing to maintain a position in STEM. Uh, she wanted to know what we were doing in our senior ROTC program to address the world of cyber, which is a, a new branch within the Army. Uh, very appropriate questions. We were very fortunate to have her with us uh, long enough to tour the campus, to take her into our science labs, which we were fortunate enough recently to spend about a million and a half dollars upgrading them to make sure they are as pertinent as we can make them in STEM, to take her into Frank Kimber's uh, Earth uh, Science class and let her see the amazing products he has there to teach those classes. And we were able to extract from her a commitment to come back because we ran out of time and she didn't get to see everything at NMMI. Congressman, we want to give you a, a picture of what is probably the most prominent uh, feature on the NMMI campus, which is the Sally Port. And then in the military, one of the things that we do is give coins for a job well done. So the Dean's Coin of Excellence in Academics 
and my coin of excellence and the date commemorating your speech. So we very much would like to give that to you. Thank you. Now we come to the centerpiece of today's ceremony, the conferring of diplomas. Ladies and gentlemen, candidates for graduation, I'm honored to present our Dean of Academics and Chief Academic Officer, Brigadier General Douglas Murray, United States Air Force, retired. So I'm the centerpiece, huh? <laughs> Congresswoman Tories, small, members of the Board of Regents, Major General Grizzle, and all here present. As the Dean of Faculty and Chief Academic Officer, I'm proud to introduce and present to you the NMI class of 2019. The first entering class in 1891, number 38. And despite what some of my colleagues will tell you, I was not there for that graduating class. <laughs> Today's graduates, number 157, of which 92 are junior college graduates who will graduate later this morning, 11 o'clock, and 65 high school graduates who will receive their diplomas today. The 157 today actually join 25 members of what I call the advanced team that graduated in December of 2018, which means the total, if we do our math, was 182 graduates. Now I'd like to say a few words specifically to the graduates. Yesterday, 25 members of the NMI class of 2019 received a commission as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Army Guard, U.S. Army Guard or Reserve. But you know, as I was listening to the congresswoman speak, I realized that they were not the only young men and women that were being commissioned yesterday. All, all of you are receiving a commission today. Because what the congresswoman said is what that commission is all about. It's one based upon what the word itself commission means and that is a commitment of service and leadership, common to both commissions, whether it's going into the service or into some unyet defined role for you, will be to play a role in leadership of your sector of society. It will happen. If you remember, when you came here, I mentioned to you that in the words of David Frost, you had the same, made the decision to travel the road less traveled. It would lead to the opportunity to learn and develop the knowledge, skills, values, and competencies required of one who must lead. In a real sense, your commission is to lead and serve, and not coincidentally, that is, of course, the mission of NMMI. This was perhaps best said by a young man named Wes Moore who, as a young man, sat where you sat, not here at NMMI, but at a Simmer military school. Let me tell you a brief story about Westmore, if you don't know of him. He's an immigrant. His parents were immigrants from Jamaica. They settled in, Boston, in, uh, in Baltimore and later New York City. When he was in uh, middle school, his principal told him, I don't think, Wes, that you're going to amount to anything. You've been a failure all your life, and that's what's going to happen. However, he went off to military school and actually a junior college. He graduated, went off to a four-year school. He became commissioned as an early commission uh, graduate in that two-year college. He went to serve in Afghanistan. He was a Rhodes Scholar and served in the White House. That can be you. That is what this commission is all about. Service and success increasingly as you bring those lights together. And those of you who were at the baccalaureate services yesterday heard uh, the uh, 
Chav Reverend Chavez talk about defining who you are, asking that question, who am I? What am I to do? The answer has been developing with you in the years that you have been at MMI. That is what this is all about. Perhaps the words of one who lived the history has said it best. And this is what Wes Moore said about that commission, that commission to serve that the Congresswoman talked about. This is what he says. To be clear, service doesn't necessarily mean running for office, suiting up in a military uniform, or volunteering for charity, although it might. Service simply means we embrace the possibility of living for more than ourselves. And I would add, that's what you have been doing and dedicating yourselves to do. He went on and said, I am convinced that most of the time, that's what the voice inside of us is calling us to do, to live for more than ourselves. I think it's the truth that hunts us down our common calling. And when we answer that call, when we answer that call, we find that the world's challenges and our own work eventually meet. That is what this is about. That is what is happening when you accept that diploma here in a few minutes to accept that commission and to do and move forward in the years ahead. Now I have a comment and for the uh, audience. If you would look at your programs, you will see in the program the names of uh, the graduates and where you will also see where they will pursue their next phase in their education because we are about preparing young men and women for that next level of learning, that next introduction to the fundamentals and the common requirements. Now, students who show particular distinction in scholarship at NMI are offered the opportunity of graduating with highest honors, high honors, and with honors. The names of those individuals are identified in your program in the graduation order of merit and will receive their diplomas in that same order. Now to graduate with highest honors, a cadet must graduate with at least a 3.75 GPA. Will the graduates who will graduate with highest honors please stand and be recognized by all here present. To graduate with high honors, a cadet must graduate with at least a 3.5 GPA. Will the graduates with high honors please rise and be recognized? Please be seated. And to graduate with honors, a cadet must graduate with at least a 3.25 GPA. Will the graduates with honors please rise and be recognized? <laughs> also in your program, we'll identify two cadets that graduated with the scholar's distinction. To do so, these cadets must complete the most rigorous curriculum available at NMI. Well, now it is my honor to certify the candidates for high school diplomas. Will all candidates please rise and remain standing? All candidates, all of the class. As the Chief Academic Officer, As the Chief Academic Officer of the New Mexico Military Institute, I confirm to the President and members of the Board of Regents and the President and Superintendent of NMI that each of these young men and women have successfully completed a rigorous and challenging course of studies that has prepared them mentally, physically, and morally to become leaders of character and pursue their calling in life to go on to the next level of their education. To each of you and in the name of your faculty, staff, TLAs, 
and all who have touched your lives because you have touched all of our lives, we offer our sincere congratulations. We could not be more proud of what you have accomplished. We will be even more proud of what you will accomplish. Thank you, and please be seated. And now I'll turn the microphone over to our MC. Colonel George Brick, the Vice Academic Dean and High School Principal, will now address the graduates of the New Mexico Military Institute High School Class of 2019. Colonel Brick. Congratulations, cadets. It's a great day. It's been a great four years. I, it's been my honor and pleasure to have had some small role in your life uh, during this period of time. I want to thank the, your advisor, Captain Gomez, thank the faculty and parents, and of course, everyone involved. In the book of Ecclesiastes, we read that a cord of three strands is not easily broken. In fact, a cord of three strands has almost mystical power because it is much stronger than the sum of its three parts. I believe NMMI has captured this mystical truth in our delivery of education. At New Mexico Military Institute, that cord of three strands is reflected in academic excellence, uncompromising character, and personal physical strength. Indeed, a cord of three strands that will serve you well as you begin to achieve your life goals. And it, it is now time to award diplomas. I would call upon third class counselor, Captain Bertha Gomez. Please bring forward our 2019 graduates. Congresswoman Sochi Torres Small will present the diplomas. Joining her will be Major General Jerry Grizzle, President and Superintendent, Brigadier General Douglas Murray, Dean of Academics and Chief Academic Officer, Colonel George Brick, Vice Dean and High School Principal, and Lieutenant Colonel John Graff, Commandant of Cadets and Dean of Students. You ready? All right. 2019 valedictorian, Gavin Wayne Yates, Rutherford, Texas. <laughs> Salutatorian, Erin Alisa Wolf, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Graduating with highest honors, Jose Miguel Reynoso, Mazoy, Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico. <laughs> Santiago Mora Lopez Bata, Mexico, Distrito Federal, Mexico. <laughs> Gunner William Schwab, Farmington, New Mexico. Graduating with high honors, Alejandro Lopez, Agua Pureta, Sonora, Mexico. <laughs> Ji Hee Yoon, Republic of Korea. At this point, I would like to point out that Cadet Yoon has also completed our most rigorous scholars program. Calista Victoria Irene Hawkins, Waikolola, Hawaii. Zachary Allen Davis, Odessa, Texas. Michael Daniel Exidas, Petaluma, California. Logan Elan True, Roswell, New Mexico. 
Jimena Flores Navarro, Aqua Pareta, Sonora, Mexico. Calvin Omar Lopez Gonzalez, Cananea, Sonora, Mexico. Ryan Alexander Cuellar, Buffalo Grove, Illinois. Samuel Thomas Johnston, Kingwood, Texas. Graduating with honors, Brisa Suzanne Hecox, Roswell, New Mexico. Kelsey Ann Smith, Capitan, New Mexico. Casey Marie Day, Phoenix, Arizona. And at this point, I would like to point out that Casey Day has also completed our most rigorous scholars program and will graduate from junior college at 11 this morning. Jake Austin Lively, Roswell, New Mexico. Aurelio Anthony Almeida, Roswell, New Mexico. Alejandra Patricia Silva Alvarez, Culiacan, Sinaloa, Mexico. Desiree Michaela Benelli, Aneth, Utah. 2019 high school graduates, Mauricio Andreas Anaya Calderon, Puerto Penasco, Sonora, Mexico. Jasper Lynn Best, Roswell, New Mexico. Jamil Javon Hernandez Brown, Roswell, New Mexico. Mario Camus, Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico. Jason Lee Chester, Carlsbad, New Mexico. Claudio Quinn Godoy, Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico. Daniel Cormontai Gotti, Dimming, New Mexico. Tristan Michael Edwards, Alto, New Mexico. Alejandro Hill Elias, Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico. Mikhail Jakir, Golder Price, St. George's, Bermuda. Beijing People Republic, China. Ivan Indigo Padilla, Hermosilla, Sonora, Mexico. Jorge Urata Guayna, Andoiza, Hermosilla, Sonora, Mexico. Madison Victoria Jacobson, Dimming, New Mexico. Anthony Tyler Kleinkohl, Mescalero, New Mexico. Alex Lee, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Brian Kang Wook Lee, Seoul, Republic of Korea. Gerardo Abraham Leva Jr., Ojinawa, Chihuahua, Mexico. Zachary James Martin, Las Cruces, New Mexico. Taryn Kale Nikitas McKinstry, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Madison Marie McLean, Carlsbad, New Mexico. Delinda Casey Moore, Enterprise, Kansas. Juan Carlos Munguia Coronado, Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico. Anthony Amen Newman, Huntington Beach, California. Nicholas Chase Newberry, Frisco, Texas. Skylar Marie, Sean Anthony Nunn, Sacramento, California. Ernesto Ortega Apodaca Las Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico. Edward Nathan Perez, Roswell, New Mexico. 
Justin Daniel Portwood, Aubrey, Texas. Hector Alejandro Reina Jimenez, Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico. Tina Francisca Roberts, Prairie Island, Minnesota. Jonathan Arian Romero, Santa Rosa, New Mexico. Rodrigo Tejo Sanchez, Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico. Hui Ze Tran, Ho Chi Minh, Republic of Vietnam. Mateo Trevathan Diaz de Soyano, Chapala, Jalisco, Mexico. Kevin Suarez Tully, Bloomfield, New Mexico. Luis Antonio Zinzun Castaneda, Nogales, Sonora, Mexico. Demetria Monet Ulavari, Socorro, New Mexico. Francisco Adrian Vasquez Gonzalez, Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico. Zachary Michael Wesley, High Point, North Carolina. Liana Danielle Ward, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Republic, China. On behalf of the New Mexico Military Institute family, congratulations to the graduates of 2019. Graduates and your families are invited to a reception on Pixie Field at the south side of Pearson immediately following our ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commandant of Cadets and Dean of Students, Lieutenant Colonel John Graff, United States Army, retired. Well, good morning. Representative Torres Small, members of the Board of Regents, General Grizzle, General Murray, and Colonel Brick. Distinguished guests, family, friends, and most importantly, graduates, thank you so much for being here this morning. And I know that uh, there's a tremendous amount of support, a lot of patience, and a lot of effort that goes into everything that you've done for our graduates. Thank you so much again for being here, and thank you for your support. You know, uh, I talked to our graduates a couple of weeks ago. You know, every year we have some of our, uh, our graduating cadets that get a little over-exuberant in their celebrations. And uh, sometimes we have some incidents that wouldn't be, you know, illegal or anything like that, but uh, would not be tolerated at another school, or it would be overlooked or tolerated somewhere else, but not here. And I made them a promise. I said, hey, if, uh, if you go through these next few weeks, and we have no serious incidents of misconduct, I will shave my head. <laughs> so here I am. But you know, it's, uh, it's not about that. What it's about is all the little things that you've done, all the, the years that you've been here. And this great accomplishment only happens because of all the steps you take over all the time that you've been here. One step at a time, you reach your goal. And it's that ability of influence that you have on the people around you. 
the very essence of leadership. How do you influence the person next to you? Is it a good influence or a bad? Strong or weak? And no matter where you go in the world, to your family, to your community, your state, your country, anywhere, that place is better because you are there. That is what leadership is. And I can honestly say that as you prepare to leave and move on to those next steps, NMMI has been better because you are here. Cool? So God bless you and all that you have done and all that you will do. I wish you all the best for the years ahead. For those of you coming back, what a tremendous asset we have in your returning. The core will definitely be better. To wherever life's journeys take you, I wish you safe travels. And when you return to the old post, return with honor. At this time, I'd last like to ask everyone to stand and invite our music director, Lieutenant Colonel Steve Thorpe, to lead us in singing the old post. Graduates, at this time, if you're wearing a ring, go ahead and turn it so that the year is facing outside and the letters of NMMI face inside to remind you of your alma mater. Graduates, attention, you're dismissed.